that makes me think even more so that all the stories we heard in the controlled media were lies about your son. They were lies. They were lies. Because he was a kind, gentle person too. Loved people and his main goal in life was to help, you know, save people's souls. And uh, he didn't like anybody to be unkind to anybody else. And he also told the BATF to come on over two weeks before. He did. He told them several times to come out. They were in the gun shop one day and uh, found out that they were there asking about him. And he said, tell them to come on over. Sheriff Harwell knew him. and The had sheriff of this county said that he was a good guy and wasn't bothering anybody and that this yeah. was a good community out here. He had come out here many times, uh, you know, just in and talked to David. And Sheriff Harwell told me last year, he said, I'm sure I'm sorry, Bonnie, what happened, if anything I can do for you. Well, we need to stand up for what we know is right and to, to demand that... Um, investigations be done on what happened here and see if it doesn't happen again. We'd already had breakfast and I was back in my room and all of a sudden I hear a lot of people out here in the, in the cafeteria and I thought, what's going on? Seems to be a lot of people out there and we've already eaten, so what, what's the deal? So I go in there to find out what's going on and somebody says, hey, we just got word that somebody's coming. It's gonna be some kind of a, a raid or, or whatever. And about that time, David walked in from this side. Uh, he'd come down the hall and come in the cafeteria from the, this other side and basically confirmed it. He says, uh, we just heard that, you know, the whole bunch of some kind of agents coming. And uh, he says, I want everybody to stay cool, go back to your rooms, just be calm. He said, I'll go down the front door and, and talk to them, see what they want and, and, you know, try to talk to them. The helicopters came in from that direction and they were coming and as they came in, David's room was here, extend like this is the building, his room's extended out on the south side, and that's what they were pointing at. They were pointing at his room, and, <clears throat> and they came in shooting in a V formation. The infrared with the explosion and the people, the flashes that we have on infrared, absolutely prove beyond the shadow of the doubt that people were killed. A lot of averages would state that, you know, if nine people survive from a fire, that that people are going to come out of the back where the majority of the people are. And the fact that no one survived that came out of the back always escaped me. I could never understand why. I had an, a theory, but I could never prove it. This infrared video proves that beyond a shadow of a doubt that people were killed. Carry over our militarism right into our churches to assault church people. Paramilitary uh, concept of police is a police state, you know. And the, our Constitution was created to prevent a police state. For that, Jeff Jamar in the congressional hearings stated categorically that the reason why April 19th was picked was because the weather was good. Well, if you're putting gas into a building, having a high velocity wind operative that could dissipate the gas doesn't mean that the weather was good. It means that it was bad. So, what did he mean the weather was good? Was it good for a fire? Yeah. It was very conducive for an arson fire, but it wasn't very good for inserting gas that day. So, what did Jeff Jamar mean? No one asked him that question. What was the reason for the fire? When they saw we weren't going to give in, they had to get rid of us. They had to get rid of us. They had to cover up everything that had happened. I've known the Branch Davidians a long time, and I think they're good, God-fearing people. I think they were demonized. We're going to build this church back. I've talked to the surviving Branch Davidians, and they concur with my idea to have it a church, and at the same time, a memorial and a museum for what happened right here on this very ground uh, in 1993. It's called the Phoenix Project, a church that will rise from the ashes of the Branch Davidian compound. I think it's uh, important that we have a place to worship again uh, after our church was destroyed. Volunteers are doing all the work. Volunteers such as Austin contractor Mike Hansen. We just think it's the right thing to do. And one Davidian survivor says she at first doubted the volunteers would come. When I looked and saw the people and how they're helping, I didn't think anybody had the guts to do it. That is razor wire. That is so sharp. You can hardly touch it. It will cut you. You know, they said they wanted the people to come out, but they put the razor wire in front of the windows, and there was no way the people could come out of those windows, which they could have crawled out of at any time with that wire there. That would have ripped them to pieces. My name is Cyrus. I was eight years old when I died. I was burned alive at Mount Carmel April 19, 1993. We've had threats out here 
probably about five different times about people that uh, throwing matches out saying burn baby burn. This you're seeing here is 21 days of work, 21 actual days of work. And we're going to change our strategy to try to get through by April 19th. When you first heard about us uh, talking about rebuilding it, did you did you think we'd really do it? Uh, yes. I never doubted it. Wow. Because you knew Mike going way back, didn't you? Yes. The cameraman? Yes. Oh, these were the, the happiest days of my life, believe it or not. You know, people from all nationalities, all cultures, um, we, we used to get along so well, like brothers and sisters. You're saying they drive up in the vehicle, they jump out, they run up, and in 10 seconds, they start shooting the dogs and shooting the front door and shooting the building. Yes. Did you and see any holes in the ceiling? Yeah, oh yeah. The room was like a strainer. It was full of holes. A sieve? <laughs> it, it was, yes. It was, so, there were so many holes in the room. I don't know, I don't know how. We, 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 we didn't get killed then. Uh, I come down here and met a lot of new people, real nice people. I knew what I was going to meet when I got here anyway. It's no surprise. But uh, all these people out here volunteering to help these uh, Davidians rebuild this church, uh, and I think it's great. You know, I, the federal government, uh, they like to go out and, and destroy, and these people are out here building, and that's the difference between a, a bunch of good folks and a bunch of bad ones. Now, when they, you know, they want us to jump through their hoops and all that, they're not my God or my creator or they're not my boss or anything else. They're nobody to me, actually. Really? Yeah, right. nobody. They want to be somebody. They want to be Wyatt Earp and, and Bill Hickok and all that, and they want to come out and just kill people. They're murderers is what they are. They're liars and murderers, period. The government blows up their own building so they can spend uh, over $30 million in an edifice to Bill Clinton's success. And uh, out here, the people have raised, uh, helped raise the Branch Davidian Church and they have contributed their own money and uh, yet I think uh, what we've done here is far more meaningful and valuable at least in spiritual terms than the the Alfred P. Murrah building will ever be so yes, I think it's ironic and I think it's appropriate that they have the dedication on the same day because <laughs> all the, the staff pukes politicos yes, will be at the uh, at the memorial to Bill Clinton 30 million dollars and and uh, all the quality people, you know, God's people will be out here, so. I love it. Yeah, y'all are from uh, the Michigan State Militia. That's right. Yeah, and uh, y'all came down for the dedication of the New Mount Carmel Church. Sure did. Sure did. And uh, why did you do that? Well, we felt that it was part of our duty to come down and talk to the people, ask for their forgiveness for our inadequate response seven years ago. <laughs> And we had a plaque we wanted to present the video A few months later, Alex called me up again and said, Hey, George, you want to do it again? I said, Sure, where? He said, Wake up. I said, What are we going to build? He said, The church. I said, Oh, okay. He said, It's going to be a Mount Carmel. I said, Absolutely. I'm in for it. Hundreds of volunteers. $92,000 of donated cash that came in in $5 bills, $10 bills, and a few very, very special people that, they, that donated thousands of dollars. These people are, are some of the best people I've ever met in my life. And what they have slandered, they have been slandered, and they have been put false witness on, and that's one thing, if anything, with, and also the people that are in prison, they need to come out. Right.